guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Doo. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here again with my Rose Park kit and we have been busy making things for our Rose Park journal. So just continuing really in the same vein, just want to kind of like, um, you know, make up some more bits and pieces. So I've got here, I mean, this is obviously, you know, a really nice roomy pocket. Um, and this one is, what is this? Uh, honestly, it's so hard to remember. Oh, was this that new one that we made? This was that new um, style pocket that we made. Um, this one has been coffee dyed, which is a bit annoying because I don't think I've actually coffee dyed the rest, so I might not use that one. Um, we've got bits of snippet roll, which I have been hoarding because it just is so yummy and lovely. Um, so I can't quite bring myself now to use it. We have got one of those kind of like envelopey type pieces. So yeah, let's just kind of de decorate up some of these bits here. So. Oh, I'm going to have to use this snippet roll. Honestly, I've, I can't bring myself to use it. Like, oh, what is wrong with me? It looks so pretty. I just really, yeah, it's kind of, um, you know, hard to actually tear into it because it just looks so gorgeous. But yeah, I mean, how ridiculous because of course I did, I did make it to use. So, right, I'm just going to cut in or tear in here. And I'm just going to tear this edge off as well because I don't like those white core. So we've got this, you know, smaller section now. So, yeah, let's have that maybe on here. Now, do we want it at the top of this pocket or do we want it down here? I mean, it's kind of quite nice on the top, to be honest. I mean, it's a bit different to do that. I wouldn't normally kind of do it on the top. But, you know, why can't we? mix it up why can't we have it on the top there's no reason really is there why we couldn't just do that so just going to cut one of these butterflies out from here Okie dokie. i have to be honest and say this is ages since i've actually come and played with this um yeah i started it ages ago and then got kind of pulled off doing other um, projects. So yeah, I haven't actually worked on this for several weeks now. So I don't know about you guys, but if that happens, it takes me ages then to get back into it because I kind of can't really remember where I was headed and what I was actually doing. So yeah, I'm a little bit rusty with this kit now because I've been doing other stuff. So I have to kind of get back into the zone a bit and um, fathom out, you know, what I was actually doing with it. So yeah. Oh, that's quite pretty on there, isn't it? I'm just going to pull in, because we're doing an altered book here. So I'm just going to pull in the bits that we have done and finished so far. So, okay, so I've got lots of black lace going on. I have got some ivory lace going on here. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of check what was the sort of general theme that we were doing. So I actually haven't done very much at all now I come to look at it. So uh, yeah, we've got quite a lot of work, quite a lot of work to do. But yes, it would appear that I'm doing the black lace, um, but there's no reason why we can't now mix in a bit of white lace as well. So I'm just going to cut this white lace down because I thought this pocket would look really quite pretty with a bit of white lace. It would be like a bit of a contrast to the black. Oops. Now, top or bottom? Oh, I don't know. I like it on the top and I like it on the bottom. Which do we think? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I do have another butterfly. Let me just cut this one out. Hold on. Because I'm wondering if we could have the two. Okay. Like oh, I've got really cosy up here this morning, so I now feel a bit like I'm falling asleep. <laughs> so I do apologise in advance if I suddenly like, you know, my head head suddenly hits the decks and I I just fall, just fall asleep. No, hopefully I'm not going to actually fall asleep. But yeah, I do feel quite tired. Right, just going to double check that this is how we want this and we wouldn't prefer it this way round. 
I don't know. I mean, this is the natural way, isn't it? To obviously have the, you know, the decorative part on the bottom. Um, there was just something kind of calling me saying, but yeah, now I've kind of moved it, actually. What was I thinking? Of course, it does look better this way around. So, yeah, just going to glue that white lace down here. Haven't decided what colour I'm going to paint that um, altered book yet either because I normally just paint the pages in an altered book. Um, I have seen lots of people who cover them with paper. I mean, for me personally, I just think, you know, why would you do that? Because that's going to make more bulk on the pages. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But yeah, I think because, you know, I use a lot of lace and all of that, my stuff gets pretty bulky anyway, let's face it. So to then glue pages onto the pages, if you see what I mean, glue paper onto the pages, that's just going to bulk it out even more. So I think for me, it's just a safer option is to just, um, you know, what do you call it? The, uh, you know, painting, because I can't afford the extra bulk of the, um, yeah, sticking paper on, you know, I think that's kind of like a step too far. And actually, you know, I just think actually quite, you know, probably not that necessary. I think it's probably just, I don't know whether it's quicker to paint the pages because obviously you do have to factor in the drying. So, I mean, actually it's a pretty time consuming process to paint the pages, but yeah, I definitely think it's, you know, it's a good alternative, especially if you're trying to keep the bulk to a minimum. I think it's, you know, it's something that works really well. It's something that I seem to have always done, I think, with my um, altered books. So, yeah, just a kind of like what I would call a tried and tested, tried and tested method. So, yeah, definitely find it, it works quite well for me. But, you know, not saying that that necessarily would then work for everybody. But, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that actually is much easier to do, obviously, in the summer when you can take your altered book outside because, um, you know, like I say, it does take quite a long time for the pages to dry. So if you can do it in the garden, then it's just a lot quicker because actually then they dry pretty much instantly. You know, the second the sun is like hitting them, they're drying, you know, whereas if you're doing it inside, I mean, you could dry them with your heat tool. I have done that before. Um, but you know, again, that's quite laborious because you have to be sat there with the heat tool. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not really a, a really quick way to do it, but yeah, so maybe gluing is, uh, you know, gluing the paper in, maybe that's actually a faster option. So maybe that's why a lot of people do that. Um, but for me, I just think actually to keep the bulk down, it's not probably the best option for me. Um, but it does look lovely, absolutely lovely, with the glued in pages. Yeah, they definitely look very nice. That being said, I think the paint looks nice too. You know, I don't not like the paint. I think the paint looks good. Especially because you can then really pick some nice colours, you know. And you don't even have to do the same colours throughout. You can, you know, have different coloured pages. I mean, I wouldn't probably choose, like, completely rainbow, if you see what I mean. You know, I would try and stick to you know maybe like two or three different colors that I would not alternate in a sort of um deliberate way but just have you know mixed and matched if you see what I mean you know not mixed and matched but you know just randomly through the journal I would probably do that well I have done that in the past I have done that um so that kind of works quite well but yeah I wouldn't probably do you know, completely like a rainbow, because um, it might just look really horrible. Oh, I prefer that, I think, without that stamp, so yeah. Yeah, I think it might just look really horrible, to be honest, if you went too, too crazy rainbow, you know, in there. But yeah, again, I mean, it depends on the look you're going for, doesn't it, you know? So you may do it and actually think, oh, that looks really awesome, you know? It's just a sort of trial and error trial and error type situation right okay so back to my snippet roll oh I just can't bring myself to use it I just really love it so much I don't know what's wrong with me this is now the second snippet roll I've made recently that I'm then wanting to hoard and not use I mean what is going on with me 
I should really stop it because, um, you know, that's just not really feasible to be doing things like that, is it? And why make them? Why make them if then I don't want to actually use them? That's just ridiculous behaviour. Oh. But, you know, they take a long time to make. And, you know, when they do turn out really pretty, it is hard to use them. You know? Well, that's quite lovely on there, isn't it? Yeah. So this is just a pocket with sort of gusset, um, you know, insides. So, yeah. I mean, that looks gorgeous. That being said, we do have obviously other bits that we could use. Um, that we could make a little pocket just on the front where it would be sort of much more simplistic. Of course, then it would give me the opportunity to hoard this a little bit longer. Not permanently, because of course, you know, I do want to eventually be using this, but yeah, I could just hoard it for a, for a bit longer. Um, I mean, what's the point? I might as well just use it, to be honest, but all right, let me just pull in a couple of bits from behind me from the kit. Oh no, where are they gone? Oh, I'm so sorry, hold on a second. Right, sorry about that. Um, obviously, yeah, got disturbed on the phone. But while I was on the phone, I then dug around and then I found these, which are from my um, Pink Poses kit. So I actually thought, let's have one of these frames on here, which I think will look gorgeous. So yeah, I'm just going to quickly cut this one out because this is this lovely pretty pink, which I just think will look really super on there. And then um, I might have that black word that I, you know, cut out and rejected on the last piece. So, yeah. And then just maybe a butterfly or maybe one or two of the roses, I think would just finish this off really nicely. So, yeah, let's just see. Okie dokie. I mean, the other thing is with altered books, you know, you have to be slightly aware of like the size of the pages because obviously depending on the size book that you've used, you know, is going to depend on what sort of size your pieces are going to be able to be. Um, and oftentimes, you know, they're not going to be as wide as like say A4 copy page. Now I'm not saying that that's always the case, but yeah, quite often I think they're not going to be as big as the A4 copy um, paper. So, I mean, it's just kind of something to be a little bit aware of when you're making your pieces. Cause you know, the last thing you want to do is obviously make a bunch of pieces that then yeah, then fine don't actually fit on you know on what you've made because that would be just frustrating so um yeah just kind of something to keep in mind really okay and then just grab in the other sheet where i saw a butterfly okay right. Yeah, this looks very pretty, doesn't it? So, yeah, let's just take this flower. Okay. There we go. Okay, right. That one. Oops. Just cut out this one now. Yeah, as I say, I haven't coffee dyed this. Um, although I do appear to have coffee dyed one or two things. So uh, yeah, I perhaps need to have another look and just just refresh my memory as to what my plan was with this book. So um, like I say, I mean, sometimes it's, you know, it's easily forgotten, isn't it? You know, what you've been doing with something and then you come back to it and you're like, Ooh, what was I doing with that? Hard to remember. I'm so sorry if you can hear drilling and things downstairs. Um, it's my son. He's, yeah, stripping the wallpaper off. Um, so I am filming this way back when, probably by the time this goes up. You know, I'm hoping it will be way back when anyway. When we were madly decorating our house. So I'm hoping that this is going to be a dim and distant memory by the time this video goes up. But hey, who knows? We might still be doing it. Um, but yeah. So that's what he's doing is just, you know, drilling a shelf to come down. So um, but I can take the wallpaper off. So, yeah. 
you know, reverse drilling. I mean, obviously that made no sense to say he was drilling the shelf to take it down. Reverse drilling, you know, to take the screws out um, is what he's doing. So, yeah, reverse drilling. I don't know if that's a thing, but that's what he's doing. Okay, so how pretty does that frame look on there? Love how that looks. And then this little flower. So I'm just going to put this down here. Now, just before I put it on, I'm just going to see if I want to have any lace on here. Because heaven forbid that we would have a laceless piece. You know, that would just not be a good thing at all. So, yeah. Now, do we want black or do we want white is the question. Hmm. Oh, the white's quite pretty on there, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's nice to just have a contrast, isn't it? And, um, you know, I don't necessarily want to have black all throughout the whole thing. But I wanted to check first, because if I wanted it down here, I might have wanted to put this um, flower, you know, over the top of the lace. So I didn't want to glue the flower on, only to then find, you know, I was actually putting lace down there. So, yeah, but as it happens, I think the lace is probably better at the top here. So just going to trim that off, because... My goodness, I have some hideous cutting going on. Oh, still got hideous cutting, actually. I think I've even got worse. Yeah. Oh, well. Right, let's just glue it on and then just, you know, I might be able to trim it up afterwards. We'll see. Or it might just not look so bad anyway once it's glued down. So I'm just take that off there. Okay, and just go in from the back and just trim that across. Oh, sorry, it's just got louder. That was weird, wasn't it? Because he has been drilling already, but that bit was just really, really loud. Okay. And here. Right, so then we were just going to have this rose here and this flower here. Yeah, might put the um, word over the top of that flower. Just kind of breaks it up a little bit, makes it stand out a bit more, doesn't it? Okay. Like that. Okie dokie. Right, and this one. Like that. How gorgeous does that look? So, so, so pretty, doesn't it? Right, let me just see if I can spot my bling anywhere because, um, yeah, I, yes, I've got some here. Not much, it's got to be said, but let's just see. Oh, I don't think I need much, just a little row of four and that will do there. Okay. Oh, how pretty does that look? Gorgeous, 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 doesn't it? Yeah, love how that looks. Right, so let's put that one to one side now. So we have done two. Okay, right, what were the other bits that I had here? So, got all sorts of stuff like dropping down now from the desk because, yeah, I'm kind of working my way through things. And of course, I'm as I'm working through things, other things are just dropping in. So I've got this piece, which is, of course, one of those, um, you know, foldy out pieces. So unfortunately, as you can probably see, I've printed this out and it's, you know, reverse, uh, what do you call it, uh, double side printed. But the inside is now upside down. So that's pretty annoying, I must say. Um, but that's fine because we could always even put like a pocket or something on the inside or, you know, I mean, it's mainly obviously where the words are, but... It's, it's fine, it doesn't really kind of matter, does it, too much. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it is annoying when you do things like that, don't get me wrong. But, and, you know, that printing, it is um, one of those things that, you know, if I don't kind of do it regularly enough, you know, I just then forget which way up it's, it's needing to go. Right, now... 
just deciding what kind of closure that we want here. We could have like a butterfly holding the edge closed. We could have like some baker's twine or something wrapped around. Always love that. Um, let me see what kind of baker's twine I've got. I've got some black here. Which could be quite effective, couldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe put the baker's twine underneath the butterfly and then, you know, when this is then glued in, it whoops, would just be glued in at the back and then it would just wrap here, like underneath that butterfly. I think that would work quite nicely. So just going to glue down a little bit of the twine just here like that okay and then the butterfly I'm going to just place on top of there like that and again just gluing into that center kind of like a circle where the twine will then wrap around so again, not pressing it down too much. And then the twine is going to wrap around there like that. Oh yeah. Right, so let's just bring that around a couple of times for a minute. Um, it doesn't need to go around a couple of times because if it's gluing in, that would not really work anyway. Um, but yeah, just kind of, just for the time being. Um, so that looks really pretty. I don't think I even need anything else on there, to be honest. It looks lovely, you know, exactly as it is. So really, for this one, I mean, I love how it looks like this on the outside. It's just a case, really, of covering up where the inside is upside down. And I maybe just want, like, something like a tiny bit of lace or something, you know, just on either the top or the bottom you know, just as a like decorative kind of element. But yeah, not going too over the top here at all. So yeah, just kind of, um, yeah, just maybe even, I mean, that's quite pretty there. I'm just trying to use scraps that are laying around, but yeah, I'm going to have to um, not be quite so ridiculous because they are not the right size. The right size or shape are they? So yeah, I'm going to have to be a little bit more lenient and actually pull in some other bits so oh, I'm just having a quick look to see what else I've got here um, okay. oh, what have I got behind me oh, I have also got the um, sorry silk oh might have to go for this yeah might have to um Oh, might have to have a ruffle of this, I think. Yeah. So, foregoing the lace and going for the sorry silk instead. Just love that ruffled up sorry silk at the moment. It's my favourite thing. Okay. Right. So, again, just, you know, put down some glue and then just, you know, ruffle it against the hot glue. And it just makes the most gorgeous little ruffle then. You know, could not be easier. But looks so gorgeous, doesn't it? Absolutely just love how it looks. So, yeah, like that. Okay, and then just snip that edge off. Let just pop another little bit of glue in here. Just, yeah, ruffle it up like that. Oh, that's so pretty. So pretty. Right. Do we want some top and bottom is the question. Or is that too much? Mm, I do like it, top and bottom. Yep. Enough is never enough. So, yep. Let's put some at the bottom as well. Okay. And then... Yeah. Okay. 
like that. Oh, yummy. Oh, that's so pretty, isn't it? So, yeah, all I want to do now is kind of cover up the, um, you know, the upside down kind of part here. Which, to be honest, you know, it's, it's fine. What I could do is even just have a little flippy pad in there. You know, you're not even going to really be looking at this anyway, because the flippy pad would be over it. And then, you know, that also then is providing some extra journal in space. So let me just grab in a couple of sheets of copy paper. Coffee dyed copy paper. Oh, that's a bit thick. Hold on. Oh, where's my copy paper? Hold on. Oh. What's happened to that now? So, yeah. So, we've just literally put a couple of sheets in. So, I'm just going to oops, fold it here. This is my gauge of roughly where I need to. In fact, I'm not going to do it as a flippy pad, actually. I'm going to do it as a little booklet type style or actually I did this recently where I kind of had it as a fold out I think hmm. just need to make sure I'm going to be able to fit it in so yeah let's put that there like that this down like that and then yeah this can then glue on over one of those so I'm just going to cut it down just a fraction so as it fits you know a bit less snugly like that and then this just glues on then on this side just check I'm going to be able to fold this in okay yeah so just gluing it in like this and could even have it just on three sides and then it's actually a little pocket as well so like that so again, when you're doing things like this, you just want to be careful that you've glued it the right way. So if you'll notice, I twisted it round. I was gluing it in, opening that way round. I've now put it in this way round instead. And the reason for that is because I didn't want this edge to be near the fold, if you see what I mean, because I thought that would get damaged. So now it's just got this vulnerable edge, you know, this the flappy edge is on the outside if you see what I mean and then also the foldy edge is also on the outside which is how we've then managed to form that pocket so you've got a pocket there and then a little foldy piece with obviously journaling space just press this down a bit more and then on here what you could do is just put a little plain piece of paper there Oh dear, just hunting around now for some plainish paper. Hold on a second. What is this that I've got? Got some fly sheet from some book page, I think. So yeah, okay. Let's bring this in. Okay. So yeah, we can put this in here. So just fold that over. how that fits in there okay so yeah I need to bring it in quite a bit so like that okay dokey and then here in terms of height as well so 
so just take it down there like that. okay and then I'm just going to round those corners just grab my corner rounder okay and then this then can just glue straight down onto that back page which is then awesome because I have just covered up completely where we've got that upside down text nobody will be any the wiser so yeah it's all good all good right pop that down like that okay now well, I seem to have lost my glue spreader of late so um <laughs> I'm down to this little sliver that I use for the um you know spreading on the gesso when using oh my goodness and now look what I've done smudged um well I guess that's remnants of black gesso oh well oh well it doesn't matter you could still easily journal over that it's it's not the end of the world but yeah I mean obviously in an ideal world I would not have done that so a bit of inking around the edge just there like that and then this would obviously glue to the back and then just wrap around that butterfly like that as your closure. How gorgeous is that? It's so cute, isn't it? So, yeah, we have resurrected, obviously, our Rose Park journal. And, yep, we've made the three pieces um, ready to go into that altered book. So, um, yeah, pleased that I've picked it back up now. So, uh, took a while to get back into it. Um, but I hope that you like the pieces that we've made and yeah, have fun if you do anything similar and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks then. Bye.